Hey Lane, what are we gonna do this week? The same thing we do every week. Debunk artificial sweetener myths. Anybody remember Pinky in the brain? Anybody? Just me then? All right. You know the deal guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for Pinky in the brain for us trying to take over the world. This week, we're looking at a study that examined aspartame and asulfame K combinations and how they affect appetite compared to sugar-sweetened beverages and water. So this was a systematic review published by the American Society for Nutrition, where they were looking at finding studies that compared asulfame K and aspartame combinations on how they affect appetite compared to sugar-sweetened beverages, as well as how they affect appetite compared to water. Why is this important? Well, for most people, they're substituting artificially sweetened beverages or non-nutritive sweetened beverages in place of sugar-sweetened beverages. So that's kind of the application for which these sweeteners are intended. However, one of the main criticisms of people for non-nutritive sweeteners is like, why not just drink water? Water's better for you anyway. They wanted to look at the studies that had examined these outcomes and see if there's any consensus amongst the data. So what kind of studies did they include? Well, I think it's more important to talk about what the exclusion criteria is. So any studies that were done in animals or cell lines were excluded. Any studies done on people under age 18 were excluded. So these were all in adults. And they also excluded any artificial sweeteners other than aspartame and asulfame K, probably because that combination is very, very common, especially in like diet drinks and non-nutritive sweetened beverages. They also excluded all non-randomized control trials. So all these studies are including are are randomized, which is important because otherwise people's baseline characteristics can influence the outcomes of the study. And they excluded all observational or cohort studies, which is important because cohort and observational studies, while useful, cannot determine causation. And so this was exclusively a systematic review of randomized controlled trials. So very tightly controlled research. So the main outcome they were looking at was energy intake per meal when you're looking at either substituting sugar sweetened beverages with artificially sweetened beverages or substituting water with artificially sweetened beverages. So what did they find? Well, not shockingly to those of us who have been reading the research, they found a significant reduction in per meal energy intake when you used like diet drinks compared to sugar sweetened beverages. In fact, the effect was about a reduction in 200 calories per meal. Now what's interesting is compared to water, similar to what they found when compared to sugar sweetened beverages. So yes, it makes sense that, you know, you'd have a reduction in energy intake when you're substituting like a Diet Coke for a regular Coke. But they also found that if people were used to drinking water and they instead had a diet drink, that they actually had a reduction in intake, suggesting that there may be some kind of appetite suppressant effect of these non-nutritive sweeteners. What's very interesting is this fits in line with a recent meta-analysis of randomized control trials where they saw reductions in body weight for people consuming artificial sweeteners compared to those who did not. So again, one of the main like social media expert criticisms of artificial sweeteners is, well, they make you hungry and crave more bad foods, so you're better off not taking them in. If that was the case, why do we not see increases in body weight? Why do we not see increases in caloric intake when people are consuming artificially sweetened beverages? Well, that's because you're comparing them to sugar sweetened beverages. Of course they consume less in sugar sweetened beverages, but they're still eating more than they would if they were consuming water. Not according to the actual research. It's important to point out that when they did a sensitivity analysis and a subgroup analysis, and the sensitivity analysis in a systematic review or meta-analysis is basically if you have, say, eight studies, you go through and you remove each study and check to see if your results are still the same. And if one of your studies, if you remove it, if now the results change, then you should report that in your paper because it could be that one particular study is having a big heterogeneous effect on the overall outcome. And they did see that when they did a sensitivity analysis, the effect of artificially sweetened beverages reducing intake compared to water was no longer significant. So that doesn't mean it's not a real effect. It just means that we need Need more research because right now there just aren't enough studies to be very clear about it. But the important thing to point out is that this fits with another recent network meta-analysis that showed that artificially sweetened beverages 
reduced body weight compared to water. So it isn't like this is coming out of left field here. Moreover, if nothing else, let's say this effect isn't true. This is more than enough evidence now to debunk the idea that artificially sweetened beverages make you hungry or that artificial sweeteners make you hungry. They do not. At absolute worst, their effects are neutral compared to water. And at best, they significantly reduce caloric intake and body weight compared to water. So I'm not saying you should drink artificially sweetened beverages or you should use artificial sweeteners. I'm just saying this notion that exists on social media that artificial sweeteners somehow make you more hungry is not grounded in any facts. It is only feelings and it's usually pushed by the folks who are naturalism elitists and they are operating based on feelings, not facts. And as we know, data more important than your feelings. They also assessed blood glucose. There actually was a small effect of aspartame and ACE-K blends compared with sugar on blood glucose. They did reduce blood glucose on average by about 1.5 millimolar. So that's pretty good, but they did not see an effect compared to water. So again, it didn't raise blood glucose compared to water. It just didn't lower it compared to water, which is something that I'm not surprised by. They also assessed a few incretins like GIP and GLP-1 and they didn't see any difference. So what's my take home from this study? Well, this study fits in pretty nicely with the preponderance of evidence on non-nutritive or artificial sweeteners showing that they don't appear to make you hungry. If anything, they have an appetite suppressant effect, especially when compared to sugar sweetened beverages and they don't raise blood glucose, at least this specific combination of aspartame and asulfame K. And they may have an appetite suppressant effect when compared to water and certainly when compared to actual sugar sweetened beverages. So again, I'm not saying you should go out and consume artificial sweeteners. I'm just saying if you choose to, this paper supports the idea that there may be an appetite suppressant effect. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you next week.